Well, you know, we were just talking about Nina Turner a little bit and progressives in Congress and to what degree they have let us down. And I wanted to share this tweet with you guys. It's been making its rounds on the Internet a little bit. Certainly, I found myself to be cringing. Uh, this is Ro Khanna. Bill uh, Crystal, <laughs> one of the most thoughtful voices in defending liberalism and democratic institutions in our country. Learned a lot in our conversation about shaping also an inclusive narrative around American patriotism. And of course, Ro Khanna has, you know, been one of the best, best uh, voices when it comes to foreign policy in the Senate or sorry, in the House. Rather, he's been, you know, extremely critical of American interventionism, foreign policy. And he's actually worked with uh, even some Republicans and more like libertarian types in order to try to bring about an end to some of these wars, including our involvement with the Saudi led genocide in Yemen. So, you know, he's really been a, a pretty stand up congressperson up to this point. He was obviously involved with the Bernie campaign, uh, someone that I've really admired, but he does have his fair share of dog shit takes. And this is absolutely one of them. This is one that's just so, so cringy. You know, Bill Crystal was obviously like uh, Dick Cheney's like right hand man, one of the biggest propagandists pushing for the Iraq war. Um, and, and it's pretty disgusting to praise him for anything. Uh, and he's absolutely been called out for this. You know, Jen Perlman here says, if you're being held hostage, Roe, please retweet this, uh, to which he replied. Uh, we got good politic guy here says, Roe, aren't you supposed to be an anti-war representative? Left my ass off. What the fuck is this? And then we have Crystal Ball here who ratios Roe Khanna just with please no. <laughs> which I found to be an absolutely appropriate and hilarious response uh, from obviously one of the best commentators uh, on the left. So what was your guys' uh, response to this tweet? Yeah, I mean, if you keep scrolling down, I'm sure you'll find mine. I, I don't know <laughs> why we are rehabilitating war criminals. Um, I, you know, I understand and I get a lot of pushback from my liberal friends who mostly no longer talk to me, but um, you know, that I'm so angry and why are you always pushing people away and don't you want to build bridges? And so I feel like uh, you know, possibly that's what he's doing, but you know, you you can't do that with war criminals and whitewash their complicity in the disruption. I mean, disruption, the death of the Middle East, and and his contribution to that, and I mean, his contribution to destroying society even here in our country, right? Like this is a disgusting right wing person. I I think there were other ways that Roe could have. Um, found to build a bridge if what he's trying to do is get some of his own policy agenda done. Even though this, also I'll give him an idea, even though this motherfucker be belongs in Guantanamo Bay for his heinous life of fucking corruption, even yeah. he knows free right. speech is important. Okay, that's how you can build a bridge. Even the even the most disgusting motherfucker in American foreign policy, uh, or I'm, I guess he's on the short list, right? You know, you don't want to take away from Dick Cheney and you know, Henry Kissinger still out there kicking God's yeah. fucking damn it. But no, it should be he's a horrible person, but yeah, that's how you address all those terrible people. <laughs> yeah, it just it kind of it, it, I don't know. I think it's so ridiculous that there that he's participating. And, and 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 look, I I'll never I don't care who you talk to. If Ro wants to do a fucking interview with uh, Billy Crystal about whatever the fuck they want to talk about, that's their business. But yeah. the fact that what he's trying to do is paint this guy as like a stalwart of liberal democracy. This guy has crushed democracies where uh, you know he has literally like, yeah, the, like you know it orchestrated all kinds of horrible shit all over the Middle East, destroyed yeah. any kind of attempt uh, for those governments to you know, build and represent themselves, you know, doing anything it took to get a favorable U.S. outcome. He was complicit in all of the, you know, Danny Bush era war crimes. Uh, so uh, and, 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 defender of liberal values. Like, no, he's not. He's a guy putting a costume on and trying to drink tea with you and, and play pretend in Washington, D.C. Well, that's the point. He's he he says he's the most thoughtful. Yeah, he's thoughtful about propagandizing people. Right. You know, he is the one of the most evil, vile, effective propagandists for the yeah. Republican Party. No, that's a that is a truly trash take. And by the way, like he was part of the 2000 Bush v. Gore, and that's the death of democracy, also, right? Like, I mean, I remember at that point, my parents were are living in uh, Cincinnati, and they did have some friends who were Republican. And my father said, "Anyone who voted for Bush, you might as well have led me off to the ovens. I'm not longer <laughs> welcome in my home." Like. Yeah. That was the death of democracy. I mean, it, it had happened in many different times before, but he was part of that one. Not a thoughtful voice on liberal values no. on any level. Well, also, I think this really represents something that's just been a cancer throughout the last four, five, six years of American politics, which is the 
lowering of the bar thanks to Donald Trump. You know, the only reason why Bill Crystal is is like being celebrated by people like Ro Khanna and why he's accepted in these circles is because he's anti-Trump. He came out against Donald Trump. Like, woohoo, like that's all you need now to be poli- accepted in polite society, yeah. regardless of whatever war crimes you committed a decade ago. And of course, this isn't just seen in instances like this or with the rehabilitation of George W. Bush himself, uh, but it's also seen with, you know, candidates like Joe Biden easily skating to victory just because they clear that bar of being slightly better than Donald Trump. I mean, what did the Democrats have to say in 2020 to get Biden in the office? All they have to said was, what, do you really want to keep Trump in there? That fucking deranged man? You want that guy to still be in control while COVID is ravaging the country, et cetera, et cetera. It was an obvious choice for most reasonable people. Uh, And again, that's what they're going to be able to keep doing as long as the specter of Trump's horribleness continues to haunt our politics. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, if you look at, I mean, how effective their, their, their messaging has been that Republicans aren't that bad. How many Democrats donated to the fucking Lincoln project? Oh my God. This literally Republican think tank. And Democrats are just take my money, just. Yeah. And they're the same one too, you know, through the whole primary was oh, De- uh, Bernie's not a real Democrat. It's like that that Venn diagram is a total circle, right? Those same people who reach oh, or they repost Jennifer Rubin and Bill Crystal and all these disgusting war criminals. Yeah, that's such a great point. That is such a great point. The exact same people that were, oh, Bernie's not a Democrat. We can't actually elect him. The same motherfuckers that were donating to the Lincoln Project, supporting, you know, rehabilitating George W. Bush and the likes of Bill Kristol. Uh, so, yeah, I just thought this was a really out of character and weird tweet from Ro Khanna. Again, someone who's in the past been fairly uncompromising, at least when it comes to foreign policy. I mean, there's always been areas where I've criticized Ro Khanna. I think he has some kind of shady, like, personal finances. 